In this video, I'm going to talk about distributed routing, a new type of routing. We should learn distributed routing for SD-WAN and compare it with traditional routing. Okay, let's, re let's review the traditional routing. In traditional routing, as you know, we have three components. First component is control plane and then data plane and a switch fabric. The switch fabric connect control plane and data plane. We explained it in the previous video. This is the switch fabric and switch fabric connect data plane and control plane. You know that when a routing packet receive in the data plane, it is punted to the control plane. This is routing packet, for example, BGP and routing packet punted to the control plane from data plane with switch fabric. And after the processing these control packets, the RIP or routing information base complete. And after completion, completion, the RIB, the FIB in the data plane completed. And you know that the, the useful components of RIB download to the FIB in the data plane. And the relation and the communication between control plane and data plane completed and done with switch fabric. We explained it. All of these components in the one box. And you can see that we have only one box. We named it rotor or traditional rotor. You use this type of routing in many years okay this is the router traditional router okay but what is the distributed root routing okay in distributed routing we separate the components of we used before in the traditional routing i mean that we have control plane and we have data plane but not in the same box for example control plane may be in one cloud and data plane may be in another place for example you have data center in data center you have one part of data plane here for example data plane one part of data plane and maybe another part of data plane in another city or another place in one of the campus of the company data center the data plane campus or other branch or remote sites we have data planes in many places and also we have control planes control plane in another in another place okay maybe not in this not even at the same city okay here is control plane and also we should connect control plane and data plane together but here in here in this fashion of routing we don't have a case that have switch fabric to connect control plane and data plane and okay we need here also connectivity between control plane and data plane. And the connectivity between data plane and routing plane is done with another type of switch fabric. This is the connectivity. Connectivity with many types of transports. For example, internet. For example, we can use internet to connect the control plane and data planes another deployment types may be for with mpls or maybe lte connection 
or other types of transports. As you see, and you can compare this fashion of routing with the traditional, we have data plane again, we have control plane again, and also we have some types of switch fabric. But the switch fabric role here is down with any type of connectivities, for example, internet, for example, MPLS, for example, LT. Okay. And when you use this architecture, the routing is down completely different versus traditional routing. How? Look at here. When we have these types of routing, when we do these types of routing, traditional routing, when a change in the network is down, all of the routers should calculate, should compute that change. And all of the routing table, tables should be changed. You know this. For example, in 1000 router, you have you will have 1000 calculation, 1000 CPU usage for convergence. But when you have a little number, for example, one or two or three control plane device, any change in the network should be calculated for convergence only in one or maybe two or maybe three device in the control plane and the result downloaded in the all data plane and also you see that the benefits of distributed architecture distributed routing over traditional routing is that we have only a little number of control plane for example one two or three and many data planes but in traditional routing i write here traditional routing 6000 control plane and 6000 data planes okay 6000 control plane 6000 data planes 6000 times con cpu usage in distributed routing we split the control plane and data plane here is distributed routing okay because of that we have for example one or two or three for redundancy for high availability control planes and another time 6000 data plane what is the benefits the benefit is that we compute one or two or three times and then all of the and, and then the result downloaded to all of our data planes and after that if we change if a link is turned off or turned on Another computation only occurs in the control plane for one or two or three times. And the result then downloaded in the 6,000 data planes, 6,000 routers. Okay. And you see that with this type of routing, convergence time is so faster. With, with this type of routing, the data plane should only forward the, tra the user traffic and it isn't need that the, in the routers, in the data plane, we calculate anything. We only forward traffic. For data plane, we use routers. For example, many types of data plane routers exist in distributed routing. For example, we can use Viptela device, Viptela device, or Viptela hardware device, or Viptela software device, Viptela software. Software means VM. 
VM device. For example, we use in this course with VH Cloud. VH Cloud is a VH Cloud device is a VM that we deploy it on VMware Workstation, on KVM, on another type of hypervisors. Okay. For example, we have in data plane many VHs, or maybe you can use CH. CHR CH means Cisco H. Okay, we talk about this uh, these types of van H in the in the another videos. But for example, you can use CH Cisco H, and it is a CSR. 1kv 1000v that we can use for data plane data plane in data plane we have van h van h in form of vh means viptela h and ch means cisco h okay don't worry about these terms because we will talk about all of these terms in another videos now you should focus only on the architecture and difference between distributed architecture and traditional architecture okay in distributed architecture in the data center we have routers that in that routers we don't have control plane we only have data plane okay here data center and this is the edge of data center this is for example a vh a vh is a router that doesn't have any control plane only road data plane okay here vh here for example another vh this is the edge of this is the gateway of this site and here you can use for example ch or another type of van h all of these names are van H. Van H maybe is a VH, maybe is a CH or another type, for example, hardware device. Okay. And in these sites, as you see, we have routers that in these routers only data plane exists. Because of that, if a traffic receive in one of this van a this edge or these branches for example a traffic coming from data data center and destined to campus this traffic should go to the van edge as a default gateway and finally it can transport over many types of transport for example mpls broadband internet 4g lt and another time uh, another another type of transport we talk about this transport uh, in future and then it received in the campus for example okay only the van aids are used to forward traffic not control plane no control plane exists in the data plane control plane is in another place for example in a cloud or maybe in some place of your company okay and the benefits of this is in one place computation calculation of best routes convergence occurs and then the result downloaded to the this van age to the data plane and after that data plane now is working okay what is the benefits you know you know that the benefits it's a few control planes with same number of data planes in the distributed routing and in traditional routing many 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 control planes with the same data plane this is the one of the benefits of the distributed routing and we use this uh, distributed routing in sd-wan in sd-wan 
we use distributed routing. This is only one of the benefits of SD-WAN. Ben SD-WAN has many types of benefits. One of the benefits is efficient, more efficient routing. Okay, and and you know that in in this type of routing, we have faster convergence time. We have lower CPU usage because only in one place all calculation occurs and then the result downloaded to the van H as data plane. Okay, this is the first things. We mention, we will mention another benefits in many videos you see. You will see. Okay, very good. Let's review. First, in traditional routing, we have control plane. In the distributed routing, in the ST1 routing, we have control plane. It's the same. In the traditional routing, we have data plane. In the ST1 routing, distributed routing, we have data plane. It's the same. In the traditional routing, we have switch fabric. In the ST1 routing, we have a thing like switch fabric. The name isn't switch fabric. The name is transport, for example, internet, MPLS, or LT, or connection. It's the connection, secure connection, for example, with DTLS or TLS. And with this connection, the con connectivity between data plane and control plane is down. Okay, this is the first. But this is the benefits. Maybe we have some problem. Yes, we have one problem. What is the problem? As you know, in the traditional routing, we don't need to address data plane or control plane to find each other because both of them are in the one box. But when your van edge for, for your data plane and your control plane is not, aren't, aren't in the same box, you should address, for example, van edge to find control plane. You should address, you should program data plane to find control plane. Yes, it's correct. We need another component in the SD-WAN. What is that component? That component is orchestration plane. Orchestration plane. What is the orchestr orchestration plane? Okay, what is the usage of orchestr orchestration plane? The orchestration plane does many tasks, but one of its important tasks is connect control plane to data plane. For example, if in your data center in a city, you install a van edge first, connectivity between van edge and orchestration plane establish and after establishment of this connection, orchestra orchestration play, plane says to the data plane the IP address of control plane. And after that, after that, data plane can find the control plane. Maybe in your mind now exist many questions. Okay, it's normal. But we answer, we will answer all of these question, questions in this course. Now only think to my words, okay? When data plane is turned on and is connected to internet, for example, first, with some ways, find the orchestration plane. Orchestration plane is a device that is a system that we can find it with data plane. I, I will talk about this. After we find the orchestration, orchestration plane, orchestration plane 
orchestrate the communication. We send IP address of control plane to the data plane. After that, data plane can establish secure connection. All of his connection is secure. Okay. Data plane can establish a secure connection with control plane. And after that, the communication between the control plane and data plane are down. Okay. This is the new plane. Why we didn't have orchestration plane in the traditional routing? Why? You know this. Because in the traditional routing, we had all components in the one box. And because of that, we didn't need that connect that address data plane and control plane to find each other. But in the distributed routing, data plane and control plane and other planes aren't in the same box. Because of that, we should address in some ways data plane to find control plane. This is one of the reasons that we use orchestration plane, new plane in the ST1 routing or in the distributed routing. Okay, new plane. And also we have management plane. As you remember, in the traditional routing, traditional router, we have management plane. Okay, with management plane, we can connect to this router and we tell it with SSH or other types of management protocols and, and configure that router. Now we have management plane in the distributed routing or in the ST van. This is the management plane. With management plane, we can do many tasks. For example, we can provision all of these components. We can onboard all of these components. We can configure our policies. We can configure our templates. We can monitor all of these components and we can troubleshoot all of these components. Management plane is an important plane in the Stevan routing. Okay, let's review again. First, traditional routing. Traditional routing. In traditional routing, we have data plane, we have control plane, and we have management plane, and also switch fabric. But the planes are data control and management. We use switch fabric to connect data plane and control plane. In the distributed routing, now you know that we have data plane, we have control plane, we have management plane, and also now a new plane. What is the name of new plane? The name is orchestration plane. Okay? This is the first difference. And also, you maybe know the name of these planes, especially in the ST van. In the Cisco ST van, we say we use the name of van edge for data plane. Van edge is our data plane. Control plane is V smart. V smart is the brain of Stevan. We use V smart for many tasks. For example, for enforcing policies to our topology. You will use it as soon as possible. You will use it many times. Don't need to worry about the VSmart or other names now. But the control plane is VSmart. The management plane is vManage. Maybe all of your daily tasks 
in the st van is are down in the vmanage you see it you see the dashboard of vmanage and you will work it many times the vmanage or Viptela manage or vmanage is the management plane of the st van and finally the orchestration plane very important plane in the st van is the v bond okay we can now use these terms and after this video i use these terms to the planes in the st van orchestration plane v bond for example and then management plane v manage and then control plane you know the name is v smart and finally for the data plane we use the the general term of van edge but in many cases van edge is vh viptela h or maybe ch cisco h okay you can use van edge or vh or ch it's not important now for our discussion okay and you can now review or compare the traditional routing with distributed routing okay we are now understand many terms in the st van such as v bond v smart v, v manage and van edge for example v edge or ch let's go further and understand or learn a little a little more than st van components and terms as you remember i told that that when van edge is connected to the internet and turned on it find v bond but how we talk about this in the special video for these concepts but now i want to mention a little about this when van edge in the branches in the data center or other places connected to internet it can connect to a special type of server or service for example ztp ztp is the abbreviation of zero touch provisioning server or zero touch provision zero touch provision means when you install van edge after you order this service to uh, cisco.com when you install van edge the in the campus or data center or or your place it can connect to the ztp server or zero touch provisioning or another type of server the name of another type pnp plug and play plug and play server or pmp server for example okay if you use van edge it connect to ztp if you use ch or if you use vh it connects to ztp if you use ch it connects automatically to the pmp server after the connectivity between ztp or pmp server established the ztp and pmp gives the van edge the v bond ip address v bond ip address okay v bond ip and then van edge can connect to v bond and after connectivity established the v bond says to the van edge the ip address of control plane such as v smart and also the ip address of management plane v manage we will talk about the all of these concepts uh, a little time further okay and maybe you ask me how van edge find ztp or pmp server it's in the 
OS in the Viptela OS or Cisco iOS XCS Divan Edition OS of these devices. The address of ZTP and the address of PMP server are burned in the iOS or Viptela OS when you buy, when you take Van Edge. Okay, don't worry about that. And when your Van Edge connected to the internet or other transport, it automatically finds ZTP or PMP. After finding ZTP or PMP, the ZTP or PMP gives you the V1 IP, and after that, data plane device, van edge device, connect to V1. Okay, the, and also after that, V1 gives to the data plane the IP address of control plane and management plane and connection between data plane and management plane and also control plane now can be established. This is one thing. Another important thing is that in the S in the SD van or in the distributed routing, especially in type of SD van, every communication are established in a secure fashion. What I mean is that when, for example, van, a van edge connect to V1, as you know, van edge first should connect to V1 to give to take from V1 the IP address of, for example, V Manage or V Smart. This connection is a DTLS connection. We will talk about these connections, but now I want you know a little more than before about SD-WAN. DTLS or Datagram Transport Layer Security is a secure connection, is a, a special security tunnel that we use between van edge and V1. And after authentication between van edge and V1 is complete, the connection established. And after the establishment of connection, V1 give the van edge the ip address of v manage and also v smart v manage is the management plane and v smart is the control plane after that van edge connect first to the v manage with dtls or tls dtls and tls in most terms is same, but the TLS use UDP, TLS use TCP. Don't worry about these terms. Van Edge connect first to vManage. vManage give the bootstrap configuration to the Van Edge configuration. Okay? After that, Van Edge connect another time with the DTLS or TLS to the VSmart. From VSmart, Van Edge can take many information. For example, routing. As you know, control plane gives the data plane routing information with a protocol name OMP, Overlay Management Protocol. We will talk about OMP especially and in many videos. Okay? OMP gives routing. OMP is a port, is a routing protocol and a protocol and also uh, with OMP we can send another information. For example, policy. Okay, OMP such as a traditional routing protocol. For example, BGP. But the OMP's function is more than a simple routing protocol. We will talk it talk about it and don't about that. And also, uh, from VSmart, we can learn policy with OMP and also use uh, VSmart, we use uh, VanEdge, use VSmart for key exchange. And in the next videos, we will talk about all of these terms. After the completion of giving information from VSmart, finally, Van Edge connect to other Van Edge with the IPsec in the data plane. Okay? 
and over IPsec we can send data. All of the uh, connections or secure connections that exist in the SD WAN now is appear are appear in this picture. Between WAN edge and V1 is DTLS connection. Between WAN edge or V manage DTLS or TLS. Between V manage and VSmart DTLS or TLS. And between WAN edge only IP session. Over IP sessions, we send the data. As you know, IPsec is a secure protocol, but the IPsec of the SD WAN a little different with the standard IPsec. Maybe you know before. I will talk about all of these terms. Don't worry. Don't worry about all of this. Did all the details of topics that I mentioned in this video. Okay. For this video is sufficient that you know the difference between distributed routing architecture and traditional routing architecture. We will talk about many terms that I mentioned in this video. And also you should now know that we have one extra plane in the sd routing versus traditional routing. That extra plane is orchestration plane. In the traditional routing we have, we had only data plane, control plane, and management plane. In the distributed routing, in, in the, for example, sd routing, we have data plane, control plane, management plane, and orchestration plane. Orchestration plane is a new plane because the component of our scenario aren't in the same box. Because of that, we should address them. We should help to the other plane, for example, control plane, data plane, management plane, to find together. After finding together, we aren't need to the V1. Because of that, when connection between WAN edge and V1 is established, and after sending from V1 to, v, to VAN edge, V manage IP and V smart IP, the connection is tear down. And after that, only we have connections or control connections between VAN edge and V and V manage and VAN edge and, and V smart, and also data plane connection between VAN edge, for example, IPsec. Don't forget, we don't use IPsec between for control connections. We use IPsec only for data plane connection in the SD WAN. And also, we use DTLS and TLS for control plane connections. And uh, I will explain all of these topics in the next videos. In this video, we compare the traditional routing and distributed routing. We learned about new terms. What is the VManage? What is the VSmart? What is the VanH? What is the VBond? And what is what are the functionality? And also we mentioned ZTP or PMP server to find VBond. Okay. And also we know what is the secure connections in the SD-WAN platform. In control plane, DTLS and TLS. In data plane, IPsec. We will explain all of these topics more granularity, with more granularity in the next videos. Don't forget about all of these terms. You will be expert in SD-WAN. If you continue learning, and if you watch every video in order. Okay? Now, you should review the topics in this video and then go to the next video. In the next video, I want to talk about sd architecture transport. For example, transport location and, and other terms. And we especially 
work on the estimate.